Hello students of statics, this is Dr. Dan Baker. And in today's video, we're gonna take a look at a pretty detailed example involving a dot product. And so what we have in this example, first of all, we have a couple of position vectors. Okay, both of these are in meters and X, Y, Z coordinates, Cartesian coordinates. So what we wanna do is first we wanna draw these vectors. Next, we wanna find the dot product of the two vectors. Third, we want to find the angle between them. Fourth, find the scalar component of A along B. Fifth, find the vector projection of A along B, remembering that the vector projection is just going to be in the direction of B, whereas in, in, in its length will be that scalar component from the previous step. And then the final step, part F, is to find the vector component of A, which is perpendicular to B. All right, so remember that an oblique projection is a projection in which um, your two of your axes are in the plane of the page. So we're gonna go with Y pointing upward, which puts a X over to the right. And then our third axis, which will be Z, is coming out of the page. So for our first vector, we're going to go positive two in the X. So that's coming over to the right. And then we're gonna go three upwards. So this is mark off a couple of distances here. So two, we're going to go up three along the Y axis, puts me right here. And then back in the Z minus six. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six. So somewhere back here is vector B. And so we could draw that coming here. Now, once again, without kind of a ghost box, it's really hard to see exactly where this is sitting. So let me add that. So this is back six in the B and coming up over back here. If you're having a hard time seeing this, this is where the GeoGebra Interactives come in quite handy. I've got a link in the description below and there'll also be a link associated with your uh, canvas page where you can actually type in these coordinates and see and kind of play around and see these vectors. So that's vector B. Vector A has positive 0.5 as its first component. So that's going to be here fairly close to uh, so halfway along there. And then minus four going downward, one, two, three, four, and then forward three in the Z. So parallel to that Z axis one, you need to scroll up here a touch, two, three. So here would be the tip of vector B. Sorry, I labeled these incorrectly. You probably already caught that, but this would be B. And as we map that up here, this would be A. Okay, so there is vector A and vector B in an oblique projection um, where X and Y are in the plane of the page and Z is coming out toward you. And so first of all, uh, for part A, we wanna find the dot product of these two vectors. Now we already have these two vectors written as components. And so this becomes a pretty straightforward um, computation that A dotted with B, we're gonna take that sum product of the components. So two times 0 0.5 plus three times negative four, we do bring along the negative values, and then plus negative six times three. Okay, so carrying that through, we find a value of negative 29, and that'll be in meters squared, right? Because each one of these are in meters, we're taking a meter times a meter. So we find that A dotted with B gives us negative 29 meters squared. All right, so once again, that is not the component of A along B. We'll solve that a little bit later, but this is the dot product of the two. So in order to find next the angle between A and B, if this is the dot product value, we need to find the length of each one of these. Okay, so A length is equal to the square root, applying the Pythagorean theorem, of two squared plus three squared plus six squared. Basically, I'll put in your negative six whole thing squared. And this gives me a value of seven meters. And then the length of B, once again, Pythagorean theorem of all those components, 0 0.5 squared 
plus negative 4 whole value squared plus 3 squared. And this gives me the decimal value of 5.025 meters. So now for part B, which is to find the angle between these two vectors. So keep in mind that angle would look something like this. Now just forecasting, it, we have one vector that's kind of going up and back, another vector that's coming down and toward us. It's very likely that these are going to end up with an angle something greater than 90 degrees. And let's see computationally if we can back that up. So the length of A times the length of B times the cosine of the angle between them equal to the dot product value, which was negative 29. And so solving for theta, theta is equal to the inverse cosine of negative 29 over 7 times 5.025. And this gives us a value theta equal to 145.53. Okay, so quite a bit bigger than 90 degrees. Of course, it can't be bigger than 180, otherwise it would measure around from the other side. So that's part A and part B. So for part C, we said we want the component of A, which is a long B. Now there's two ways we could compute this. One way is we're going to go ahead and use the dot product we already have, right? We said that A vector dotted with B vector divided by the length of B. We actually have all those terms right there already computed. We also could take the A vector dotted with the unit vector of B. That needs to be a B hat. Now I haven't yet computed B hat, so I'm going to go ahead and use uh, my first equation right here, which gives me um, this equal to negative 29 divided by, my length of B was 5.025, so 5.025, and the units on this right, this was meters squared, this is meters, and so the component of A in the direction of B, scalar component, is a negative value, and this negative value is equal to 5.77 meters. Noting that this is a negative value, and the negative value is basically telling me that A and B are going in generally different directions. And so of the total length of A, which is 7 meters, 5.77 of that is parallel to B. Okay, that's how we kind of spatially interpret that piece. Now, I just realized that I was off by one in my letters here, so let me just re-letter these just for my own simplicity. So we're calling the dot product A, we're calling this part here B. Now we just found C, then we're on to D, then we're on to E. Sorry for shifting those. And the drawing you could call step zero, uh, whatever you'd like. But um, I think I've been following through those fairly clearly, so that will re-letter them. So now for D, we want to find the projection of A onto B. Okay, so we will need the unit vector for B for this because essentially what we'll do here is we'll take this component of A along B and we're going to multiply that scalar component, the negative 5.77 times B hat. Okay, so B hat, all we're going to do is take the components of B and the components of B, I'll write them in bracket notation here, 0 0.5 comma negative 4 comma 3, and divide these by the length of B, which is 5.025, and this leaves us with three components. The first one will be positive, 0 0.1, the next one will be negative, negative 0 0.8, and then the third one here will be positive 0 0.6, right? The same ratio as the three distance components, just this was in 
this was in meters, and now this length is in meters, so meters divided by meters is a unitless unit vector. So now multiplying by negative 5.77 times 0 0.1, negative 0 0.8, and positive 0 0.6, we end up with these the projection of A onto B, once again, taking that 5.77 and pushing it onto the line of B, and this is equal to negative 0 0.57 comma positive 4.59, and then a negative 3.44. And this will also be in meters, because we took a unitless unit vector times a distance of 5.77 meters. And of course, all the signs flip, because we had a negative component of A along B. All right, so there's my projection of A along B. Now for this last step, which is the amount of A that's perpendicular to B. We didn't explicitly cover this in the first page of notes. But let's kind of talk through this. So for part E, if we know that the projection of A along B, we could also write this if we wanted to, is like the amount of A which is parallel to B. Okay, just kind of a different notation for that. So the proportion of A that's, that's parallel to B as a vector is the same thing as the projection of A onto B. So we could also write that the total vector A is made up of two different components, one of those being this amount of A which is parallel to B, and then orthogonal to that, perpendicular to that, we have the amount of A which is perpendicular to B. Okay, so really you could think like we're creating a right triangle. I'm going to draw this right triangle over here. So here is our x-axis, our y-axis coming up this direction, our z-axis coming out of the board. We said that point B was down here. Our vector B is going down that direction. Vector A is going up and back. So this is vector A. And what we just computed, this vector right here is A parallel to B. Okay, so if we extend out the line of action of B up through three-dimensional space, we could actually draw onto here that this would either be, we could label this as A, which is parallel to B, And we also wrote this as the projection of A along B. Okay, so that's that one. And so what I'm saying, this piece that's left is here. So we're saying that this is the right triangle corner. Okay, let me extend out this vector here just a touch get it actually perpendicular, okay, clean this up, all right, this is a little more accurate, sorry about that, so we have left up here, once again, this is a three-dimensional vector, this is the amount of A that's perpendicular to B. And this is a right triangle corner. Okay, so these are not planar angles. These are in a plane. Well, it's basically a plane formed by the vectors A and B. So what we can do is that we have this vector. We have, actually just let me label these with the, the right colors. We have a black vector A. We have a red vector, A parallel to B and we want to find this vector here. So we can actually do some vector algebra manip manipulation to write that 
a perpendicular to b is equal to a minus this a parallel to b. Okay, so we can actually set that up as a vector subtraction of the components. It's pretty straightforward. And so if we have a equal to our original components of 2, 3, and negative 6. Now I'm going to stack these on top of each other so we can subtract them. And so, and I'm subtracting off my negative 0 0.57 and the positive 4.59 and then the negative 3.44. These are also in meters. And so if I'm subtracting the bottom vector from the first one, I need to flip all of these signs. So the middle one here becomes negative. And then the final term here becomes positive. And so essentially what I'm doing here is I'm going to add together these ones, these ones, and those ones. And so I end up with a value of 2.57, negative 1.59, and the z component of negative 2.56 and so that gives me the vector of A perpendicular to B. So not only can you use vector dot products to find the amount of one vector parallel to another, but it turns out you can also find the amount of one vector that's perpendicular to another by doing a little bit of vector algebra. So just a quick review of everything we did in this problem. Um, we first drew our two vectors, noticing that we had an obtuse angle greater than 90 degrees between those two vectors. We computed the dot products from the components um, here in the relettered part A. We then also found the lengths of vector A, vector B, and I did that just because I knew in part B I wanted to find the angle between those vectors. So we found that that angle was equal to 145 degrees by taking this dot product value divided by the length of both, taking the inverse cosine. We then found the component projection of A along B. It's basically the length of A, which is along B. And we already had the values we could plug into this version of the equation, the dot product divided by the length of B. We found out that 5.77 meters of A is basically in the opposite direction of B. That's the negative sign. We then found the vector components of this 5.77 by multiplying the negative 5.77 by the unit vector B hat. And then in our last step, we used that vector projection, which fundamentally is the amount of A parallel to B, to then back compute the amount of A which is perpendicular to B by doing some vector algebra, subtracting this projection off of our original A vector to leave those components. Okay, so that's about all the different types of computations that you could ever be asked to do associated with a three-dimensional dot product. I hope you're having a great day.